This is the formation of polyvinyl chloride, an addition free radical polymer. Step one initiation to form the free radical is exactly the same as in ad other addition free radical polymers. The only difference occurs from step two onward when we begin to build a polymer chain, the propagation. So. Here we need a vinyl chloride monomer. That's provided to you. So we'll take one piece of our free radical. X dot is going to attack the vinyl chloride monomer. Whatever the vinyl chloride monomer looks like in the question, you need to arrange your monomer exactly the same way for every addition free radical polymerization reaction. Here we'll show the mechanism. The free radical electron attacks the space between the free radical initiator, and the first carbon of the double bond. The upper bond of the double breaks, one electron comes back to meet it, and one electron moves to the other side of the double bond. X, the initiating material, now forms a bond. The two electrons are indicated right here. form a double bond at this location. Our upper bond of our double bond is broken. It's now a single bond. And the second electron that moved to the right is now located there. The product of step one becomes a reactant into the second propagational step. So X bonded to CH2, CH, CL will attack another piece of vinyl chloride monomer. The second addition occurs exactly the same way the first one did. The free radical electron affects the empty space in between to form a bond between the carbons. The upper bond breaks, one electron to the left, one on the carbon to the right. Two electrons form a bond that joins the new monomer. The upper bond of the double breaks becomes a single. And the reaction continues. The third addition, we begin with the product. Oops. I see an hour for radical electron. Our third addition occurs when the product of step two reacts with another monomer. So here is our product of step two. It has two pieces, two mers, and it attacks another monomer. Once again, the free radical electron attacks the empty space, making a join to the first carbon. The upper bond breaks, one electron to the left, one to the right. And the 
third monomer is joined, the two electrons make a bond, CH2, double bond becomes a single, CH, CL, and the third product is also free radical. But we're only required to show three steps. So we'll show dot, 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 et cetera. The entire process continues, and the polymers can end up anywhere from hundreds of thousands to hundreds of millions of units long. Polymer chain can self-terminate. If two polymer chains run into one another, the two free radical ends form a bond that joins together two growing polymer chains, and it self-terminates. Or we can deliberately terminate the reaction by terminate by adding hydrogen. We represent our polymer now by showing one initiator, which show one mer, which will bracket with square bracket, and outside will place n. Show a polymer of n units long. We show one last Mer still in the free radical form. We show the addition of hydrogen. And the attack is very similar to before. The free radical electron attra attacks the hydrogen. The bond breaks, one electron moves left, one right. The difference is that these hydrogen are held together by only a single bond. When it breaks, the hydrogens are cleaved, the hydrogen molecule is broken in half. Now here, when another hydrogen has joined, we simply represent it by a CH2. This actually represents this hydrogen and this bond. But because we're using a condensed structural formula, we just increase the number to two on the right-hand side. The other product is a hydrogen free radical, which can then go on to terminate another growing free radical chain. 